could emit high-pitched squeaks to scare its predators. So when I first heard this sound clip, I was like, oh my god, that is a dinosaur. What even is this? Hello, my curious love bugs. How are you today? Welcome to Keto. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, welcome to Keto, and welcome to my channel where we talk about bugs every single week. So React videos have been doing pretty well, and since I just took a long bus, to get here and now I'm sitting at 8,000 feet and my sleepy altitude brain can't really prepare anything a little like you know more intense this is a react videos is what we're gonna do again so hope you like it <laughs> today we are going to be reacting to 15 exotic insects you won't believe exist I feel like we had a lot of like dangerous insects and like you know kind of like a little little bit too much negativity the last two times in the channel so now we are going to like you know admire the beautiful arthropods that exist and hopefully I can like throw in some extra facts along the way so 15 weird and exotic insects you won't believe exist and this is by trend max at 1.49 million subscribers I am not quite there yet so if you want to help a girl out be sure to subscribe and like this video so it gets pushed up in the algorithms and let's do it Exotic insects you won't believe exist elephant hawk moth what a beautiful pink hummingbird wait wait that, that's not a hummingbird that's <laughs> a not. that's a clothes moth Oh my god, that's right! And despite its robust body, which measures 2.7 inches in span, this clothes moth is able to feed on the nectar of flowers without perching on them as a professional. It's not a clothes moth, it's a hawk moth. It's in the family Sphingid, and the Sphinges are the hummingbird moths, the sphinx moths, and the hawk moths. And they're really easy to ID that entire family because they have this triangle-shaped body, like the long robust body in the middle and like these triangle-shaped wings. What's more, the elephant hawk moth is among the fastest flying insects in the world and reaches a speed of up to 12 miles per hour. If you I thought that, that due to its rarity, you could never run into this insect, in reality, it's very easy to find in urban environments. Mm -hmm. Of course, provided that you live in Europe, Asia, and North America, in particular, Canada. And if you aren't afraid of insects, you may notice that actually this clothes moth has a singular beauty for its bright colors and it's extremely beautiful. elegant legs. Okay, but that's not even the coolest thing about it. All right. So the coolest thing about the elephant hawk moth is that its caterpillar is crazy. So here's a really good photo of it. Um, it just kind of has this weird kind of like regular head with some of these re random eye spots on it. But when it's scared, it will poof its head up and curl its body around like a viper. It's so cool because this is such an amazing mimic of snakes and what's really cool is this highlight in the eye like right here that highlight in the eye you look you know those pictures where it looks like jesus is always watching you or whatever and like whatever painting it looks like they're always watching you um and it's the way that the eye is actually drawn well these caterpillars have the same effect these eye spots just the way the highlight patterns are it looks like those eyes are looking at you no matter what direction you're coming at the caterpillar at so it's pretty convincing. I mean, it's a really beautiful example. And it's not the only hawk moth caterpillar that does this. So the late, unfortunately, Andreas K has an amazing video of a hawk moth in Ecuador doing the same thing. So yeah, here it is kind of deflated. And then you see him shake the stick and it poofs up that head and looks like, uh, and looks like a snake it's absolutely amazing these hawk moth caterpillars that can do this are so 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 cool tiny devil katie did directly from the ecuadorian amazon oh. i bring you this thorny insect beautiful did, which is a distinguished tenant of the great yasumi national park where is housed a great and incredible biodiversity of animals such as hotzines anteaters jaguars among others and although I know that each rose has its thorn, please be careful with them, because if it feels threatened, the Katie Dig could emit high-pitched squeaks to scare its predators. So when I first heard this sound clip, I was like, oh my god, that is a dinosaur. What even is this? So I contacted my friend Peter Naskrecki, who not only does amazing photography on screen, but also is really interested in the acoustics of different arthropods.
arthropods. And so I messaged him and was like, hey, do you have a sound clip of this species? And he was like, no, but my friend Professor Monte Alegre does. Email him. So I emailed him and I was like, hey, I'm like watching this video and I want to like, you know, stop fear mongering and I'm trying to correct misinformation. Here's the clip that I'm correcting and here is this sound clip that they used. Do you have a real sound clip of this Katie did? And very kindly, I would like to mention that uh, Professor Monte Alegre was like so kind and didn't make me feel like an idiot at all, but was like, um, that's actually my sound clip. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's awkward. <laughs> Anyway, that sound clip is of that Katie did, but it is slowed down to a thousand frames per second. So you would never hear that exact sound if you were walking through the jungle. So I also asked if he had any clips that were not slowed down and he did send me a couple. So here you will hear the, the slow down sound clip. <laughs> and also the regular sound clip. And we're really lucky because this species calls at a frequency that we can actually hear. Many katydids will do alarm calls or other kinds of calls in the in the ultrasonic range, which we wouldn't be able to hear. So thank you so much to my friends, Peter Nascrecki and also Professor Monte Alegre for steering me in the right track and making sure that I didn't look like a complete idiot and being really kind about the fact that I didn't have any idea what I was talking about. In fact, these thorns are part of its incredible battle suit to face its fierce enemies. And if after all that you still want to bother it, I suggest you stay away from it because its two jaws are capable of making your hands bleed without mercy. Yeah, so pretty generally I tell people not to pick up Katie Dids. First of all, they're really spiny, as he, as this guy just said. They will kick you with the spines. It will not feel good. And their mandibles have iron ion deposits to make them even harder. And that's because they're mainly eating insect prey. So they need tough mandibles to pierce and crush the exoskeletons of their prey. So it makes sense that they're pretty tough. Unfortunately, they have <clears throat> work well on your skin too. So yeah, I wouldn't pick them up. As for the horn on the top of its head, there are a couple different genera that have horns there's this one, which is the spiny devil Katie did, but there's also Copyphora. And we believe that those horns are to pierce the mouth of something like a lizard or a bird that might want to try and chomp down on it. So they're pretty well protected on the back end and the front end. Thorn tree hopper. Oh, I love tree hoppers. They are so beautiful. The amounts and array of different forms and colors and things sticking off the top of their head is absolutely amazing. They're so cool. I love them. They also, they're also great moms. Also great moms. Shout out to all my bug moms out there. Because in fact, these disconcerting and unpleasant insects are thorn tree house. Unpleasant? They are gorgeous. Sometimes some of them can be pest species, but they're so pretty. It doesn't matter. I mean, it might matter, but they're pretty. Hoppers. As you can see, this species has a large horn that pretends to be a thorn, which it uses as a defense mechanism, <laughs> mainly against birds. Yeah, and it also just acts as camouflage as well. I mean, if you looked at that plant and you're just kind of walking through the jungle or walking wherever this particular one lives, you might not even think of anything was weird with that plant. These insects are super, super tiny, like millimeters long. So you might just be like, oh, that plant is thorny and continue on with your merry life. So at first it's just camouflage. And second is like, yes, they're pretty spiky and would hurt if you bit it. Do not recommend. This tiny insect can measure about 0.5 inches. And although its appearance can be frightening, take it easy. The thorn tree hopper is totally harmless. Totally Moreover, harmless. However, its favorite food is obtained by itself through the ornamental and fruit trees of the subtropical regions from northern South America to North America, specifically in the southern United States. Pyrops candelaria. Ah, uh, this is a lantern fly. Lanterns flies are funny because they have these like really big noses and their name is totally bad because it sounds like they should be able to light up, but they cannot. So I don't know who named them, but someone was like, oh, I think this thing should be able to light up and it doesn't. And the name stuck. So here we are awkward. Look at the long and very thin horn that this insect has. Many researchers believe that it could emit light like fireflies, but in reality, it's a hollow structure that Pyrops candelaria uses to drill the bark of trees. Um, the horn on the front of its nose no, I don't know how that would 
how that would drill holes in trees. It has a beak, which is its mouth part, which you can actually kind of see in this one right here. This long kind of siphon thing is what it would use to pierce the tree and suck up the sap, because they're mainly sap feeders. Make way. If you want to see it in all its splendor, you can find it in several Southeast Asian countries, such as Vietnam, Hong Kong, Laos, and Thailand. Nikki Bay, who's an amazing photographer, has photos of these, and they're absolutely gorgeous. The insects that come out of Asia are so, so beautiful. And as expected, not only its colors, but also its singular shape makes it the most popular insect among collectors. Do One you of also feel that fascination for collecting insects? Despite what it seems like, no, actually, I, again, got all of these secondhand. I personally like to use collections for teaching. If you go through some of my live videos on Periscope that I've done in the past or on some of my YouTube videos, you'll see that I've pulled some of these out to specifically talk about them. And that's how I like using collections, but no shade to people who, like, want to collect. It's just not, it's just not my thing. I prefer to take pictures. If so, tell me in the comments how big your collection is. So far, you're doing well, right? About that Although big. I've presented to you some rare insects, now it's time for you to swallow hard because you're about to see one of the most feared bugs of all. Creatinodos gang. Is this really feared? This is an Arcteid moth. It's a t species of tiger moth. Absolutely harmless. Just don't eat it. A lot of them have different kinds of alkaloids in them, which are poisonous plant chemicals, usually. So I definitely wouldn't eat it. But those large structures coming off its butt are for mating and not for whatever you may think it is. Yes. yes, I know, you've already watched the clothes moth in this list. However, you'll run scared as soon as you see this one. No, don't run scared. It literally cannot hurt you. Literally cannot. No, no, no. Don't run scared. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It won't hurt you. The Creatinotus gangus is totally chilling and disgusting. It is not disgusting. It's for you to look at it. This one is a male. Those things are popping out of its but they're not even there all of the time they are re like irreversible they poof up like balloons and when they're not poofed up like balloons they're just sitting inside the abdomen and you would never notice this one happens to be trying to mate and so it is putting all of those out and you can see all these little tiny hairs right in here and all those little tiny hairs are helping disperse the pheromones to be like, hey, schmexy ladies, I'm schmexy, and over here, come mate with me. Hmm. Is it working on you? Let me know. Let me know in the comments if, it, if it's working. So it's videos like this that I really don't understand because like they're like, it's harmless. It's just used for mating. Scary. I am tend to be afraid of things that can actually hurt me not some weird genitalia and also humans are weird this genitalia is weird and scary flowers on the other hand which is also genitalia beautiful let's give them to our lovers humans are weird common scorpion fly back to more male genitalia scorpion flies exist this is a real arthropod you can find them all over the world um and that only the males have that big tail thing and it's not a stinger it's to deliver sperm to females. This fly can scare you by the disconcert. These are not flies. They are their own order called Mycoptera. So not flies. Sting that it has at the end of its abdomen. It's not a sting. Although in fact, it's an organ that the male uses to hold the female tightly during copulation. And the most incredible is that it doesn't contain venom. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank the common God. <laughs> scorpion fly won't let any prey go because in its head, it has an elongated trunk-like structure on whose front end, its chewing jaws are ready to devour easily any small insect or spider that... They kind of look like Frankenstein's insect. They really do. I mean, they have... Many of them have these wasp-like colors to trick predators. They think that they're dangerous. They have this tail that looks like a scorpion. They have this long, weird headpiece or head extension like they they really i mean i'll give you that they kind of look like frankenstein's creation but they're totally harmless really really cool arthur this may be the funniest insect on the list because it has spots that seem to form a face yeah it's so that's cool. why it's also called man-faced stink bug or even it said jokingly that it looks like the iconic face of elvis presley <laughs> what do you think yeah right I, in my point I of view so. there's a similarity in the hairstyle anyway 
The catacanthus incarnatus measures. He just kind of looks like a smirking mask. Someone make an emoji for that. Since it's a plague in India, where you can find populations of up to 300 in a tree. Can you imagine all those faces looking at you? <laughs> I would love to see that. Uh, I need to get to Asia. Shrimp, they're everywhere. Oh, and it also flies, of course. Most insects fly. Not surprising. Panda ant. Not actually an ant. I wonder if they'll talk about this, but super cute. Be shocked to learn that it's not really an ant, but a wasp without wings. Yes, they are in the family Mutilidae, which are the velvet ants, and they are not ants. They're actually wingless wasps. Only the females are wingless. Males still have wings. You need to find the lady somehow, right? Am I right? Is serious? Yes, and although it may seem so tender, when you see it feeding from the flower's nectar, with respect to the female panda ant, I have a disturbing fact which is that she can devour other smaller ants or caterpillars occasionally without problem. I don't know a whole lot about the panda ant specifically, but but mutilids in general are parasitoids, so they will lay their egg on a whatever, and then it will burst from the body cavity, having eaten it alive for the past week or so and complete its development. We've talked about them a little bit on the channel before, so... Weird! Nevertheless, for some people, it's a very adorable insect. Would you dare to hold one? Mutilids have really painful stings in general. The common mutilid in the United States is often referred to as the cow killer. It can't actually kill the cows, but it, it definitely really hurts when they sting you. And that has a lot to do with this lifestyle. They're out, they're solitary, they're on the ground, they can't fly away, they're looking for something to lay their eggs in or on, and all that takes a lot of time of being outside and unprotected. So that solitary life, am I right? Like gotta sting the things that are getting too close to you. We talked a lot about that in last video, so check out last video, it's up here somewhere, and uh, when I was talking about the executioner wasp specifically. All right, next. Lychee shield bug. This is in the family Scutellaridae, and these are absolutely gorgeous bugs. They're often mistaken for beetles. They aren't beetles. They're actually a type of true bug or heteropteran. Check the card up there if you want more information on that. Absolutely stunning, beautiful family of insects. And just as it's very striking, it's also excessively smelly because to defend itself, it produces a very unpleasant odor. So we call stink bugs, stink bugs are the pentatomas I was mentioning earlier, but there's a whole ton of arthropods and insects that can stink and smell bad, even if they aren't quote unquote true stink bugs. The truth is that its colors fascinated me. Despite the bad smell, I think I just discovered my favorite insect. Oh, is yay. it yours too? Tell me. So amazing, yay! That's what we should do. What is your favorite insect? Let me know in the comments. In the comments. Waxtail hopper. Boo. <laughs> this disconcerting insect looks like a cockroach in its special costume for Halloween, ready to scare anyone who crosses its path. I don't think it really looks like a cockroach. I mean, all insects look like a cockroach if you consider the fact that they have wings and six legs. Although in fact, it would be its long and terrifying tail of wax, which is used as camouflage and protection against its predators. On the other side, the female also uses the wax to protect her eggs, something that looks so disgusting. I know that I compared the Pteridictia reticularis with an ordinary cockroach, but it's actually a distant relative of the cicada. So mm -hmm. keep an eye out if you live between Costa Rica and the south of Argentina, because you can find these commonly throughout Ecuador as well. They're absolutely beautiful. Those tails, I was hoping that he was going to give a little bit more information on the tails, but ha, why would I assume that? Anyway, so if you're interested, I actually just did a post about this in my Facebook group, which is a learning community. It's linked down below. It's called the Sci-Hive. If you're interested in joining it, we'd love to have you. But we have academic discussions about things just like this all the time. And that waxy filament is really interesting because it breaks off really easily. One, it attracts predators to the bum end of the insect. And the other thing is that sticky and easily breakable wax 
breaks off in the mouth of whatever tries to get it. We think that this is specifically something against ants. So like an ant would come over and go and grab onto it. And that sticky wax would basically just like stick to its face. Kind of like, you know, really horrible cotton candy. And the ant, it takes the time to sit and like try and clean off its mandibles and clean off the stuff. And that gives the hopper plenty of time to hop and then fly away. So that's what we think the wax is doing. My friend Joni also wrote a really good post on it in Ask an Entomologist, and that is also linked in the reference section below. Brazilian tree hopper. Oh, so we have another membracid. I'm glad that they like membracids as much as I do. Very pretty. Surely by its name, you'll think that it only lives in the happy country of Samba, Brazil. However, it's very common to see it in other continents like part of Africa, North America, and South America, Australia, and Asia. I think those are different species. These are what are called like the helicopter tree hoppers. And we definitely have a bunch of species here in South America. And there's some other tree hoppers with the top kind of looks like ants. We aren't really sure what this specific adornment is doing, but don't really know is there needs to be studied maybe you could be the one to figure it out become an entomologist let me just tell you that its exact function has not been established scientifically yet we don't know alligator bug oh these are also called peanut bugs uh they're also a type of fulgorid or another type of plant hopper the shape this butterfly appears to have is simply it's not a butterfly that means its bulging head gives the impression of being in front of the alligator head in addition, it has two large false eyes on its wings. Amazing! Don't you think so? Yes! This incredible queen of disguise lives in tropical humid forests of the American continent. Mm -hmm. We have them here in Ecuador. Oh, they're not going to say more about it? There's a really interesting myth in Ecuador about these guys. And the myth is basically if you get bitten, you have to uh, <clears throat> seek romantic interests. That monetization, though. <laughs> Within 24 hours or you will die. And that is obviously not true. You will not die if you are not seeking romantic interest. I'm sure it was a dude who came up with this. And they can't even bite you. Like, they have no venom. They have that same kind of mouth part that other hemipterans have, card up there, that pierces plant material in this case. Um, but if they... I, I've never heard of anyone ever even being bitten by one i'm not sure it's possible i mean i guess they could poke you with it but there's no venom or anything it wouldn't do anything you just come in be like ow i got poked and that would be the extent of it so it's a pretty interesting yeah it's an interesting uh, <coughs> myth mm -hmm. anyway moving on cockroach wasp this wasp doesn't only stand out in this list because of its striking colors or robot. okay that's not even the same wasp this is a chrysidid this is a cuckoo wasp absolutely gorgeous beautiful especially in europe you have these like rainbow chrysidids so gorgeous they're the cuckoo wasp this is not the emerald jewel wasp which is a different wasp Just body blood. that one, one most is not either terrifying reproductive cycle that's not it either for, that for is it, the emerald it'll look for a cockroach which it'll control after injecting its poison without killing it i just finished a whole video talking about the emerald jewel wasp for my recent workshop chemtails it is so interesting what's going on here that stinger which is delivering a sting to the cockroach brain basically removes the cockroach's free will by flooding its dopamine sensors and like inhibiting a thing called GABA which is basically GABA is like don't do the thing and if that is suppressed then you're like we're gonna do the thing so Turning off those specific receptors and flooding its brain with dopamine and GABA allows this, the cockroach wasp to take the cockroach by the antennae and walk it to its grave and seal it into a burrow while its larva sucks it dry over the next week. Very interesting. So I know we use parasitoids to talk about the zombie behavior, but I would actually argue that this cockroach isn't a zombie. It's just even scarier, has had its entire amount of free will just taken away from it. If you flip the cockroach upside down, it will right itself. If you throw it in water, it'll swim. If you poke it, it will try and run. But that's it. It won't run very far. It'll just right itself. It'll swim until it's not about to drown anymore. It's just, it's like a fully functioning cockroach, except for the fact that it's like, oh yes, my major predator is here. Hmm, well, he is lovely. I'm okay with that. 
deposit an egg in its abdomen in order to convert the cockroach into a living host for its larva. Although it won't Delicious. stay alive for long. About a week. Since the larva will grow by feeding on the internal organs of the cockroach until it goes outside. Totally ruthless. Golden tortoise beetle. These are so cool and you can find them in the United States. The coolest thing about these, I mean, there's so many cool things about it. I don't even know where to start. One is that the gold color is made in a really interesting manner with layers of exoskeleton and, and re reflects and refracts light in very specific ways. And the way that it makes a shiny gold color, it's very similar to how humans make mirrors. Very interesting. Also, if you poke it, then the then it changes color from gold to red, which is really, really cool. I wrote a whole article on it on Ask an Entomologist, and that is linked in the reference section below as well. The golden color of the golden tortoise beetle draws so much attention, in addition to its transparent structure that seems to protect it. Look how- Yeah, that dome structure, Combined with this ability, it has these specific feet with all these hairs that excrete an oil so it can sit very flat on leaves. And that dome structure combined with that kind of sticky oil prevents ants from prying them off of the leaf. There's so many cool things about them. Like, right? So many cool things. Manages to protect itself with its luxurious shield. This beetle is a jewel. In addition, it's so the tiny. tiniest of the list with only 0.2 inches in Oh, you can see that one's starting to turn As red. I say, good things come cool. in small packages. Luna moth. Oh, beautiful. I feel like the Luna moth is kind of like, I don't know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's like the Luna moth. It's the one that lives in the States, but it's a beautiful, beautiful moth. And those long tails are actually there to jam bat sonar and makes it harder for the bats to catch the moths pretty interesting i love these amazing and beautiful lime green wings that can measure up to 4.5 inches when they are extended which is approximately the same length as an iphone although you could as americans continue to measure everything in anything but the metric system <laughs> see it during the day this beautiful butterfly likes the mystique of night it's a moth not a butterfly of course, just as darkness has its charm it also has its dangers for the luna moth has a trick up its sleeve in order to face this voracious predator or rather a trick up its wings since it very sagaciously uses its long tail as a tool to mislead bats during a that right there is not a luna moth they're all in the same family but this is not the, the species of the luna moth that you find in north america however the tails are doing the same purpose it's attacks do you want to see how it manages to confuse its enemies pay attention to this incredible escape i was cool that they got the video from the actual scientific literature are you impressed with these wonderful insects so impressed with them and also knowing which of these things are correct and which of them aren't you like this video <laughs> <laughs> well, my beautiful love bugs, I hope that you enjoyed yet a, another React video. Some good things in here, some kind of like be afraid of these things that you shouldn't be afraid of. I like the arthropods that they highlighted. Very, very gorgeous arthropods. I just wish they did a little bit of better job of like, you know, making sure they were showing the correct species and say, not saying that they're terrifying because they're not, especially those that they showed are actually harmless. So that's kind of my opinion on it, but I hope that you saw some insects that you may not have known existed, and I hope that you like some of them. If you had a favorite of these, let me know in the thought box section below. I'm really interested in hearing if you any of these are new for you or you thought any of these were particularly cool. All right, my beautiful love bugs, I will see you next week. Here is a video by the Shame Playlist, and down here is a video recommended to you by the YouTube algorithms, and sorry, the sun is here. I don't have my ring light like I normally do because I bought that when I was on the coast. I'm not going to bring out a bus lighting. All right, we're working on it. <laughs> Appreciate all your patience. Anyway, I will see you next week. Bye!